Welcome to the 5-Minute Business Boost, where you get to choose your 5-Minute Investment. I, Sam Hicks, your host, will be discussing topics under the heading of Business Development, Marketing, Photography and more. So let's get going. Today's topic is From Idea to Execution, Tips for Successful Product Development. Now this is a little bit of a favourite because I love seeing small businesses come up with new ideas, massage them out, get it all written down, out of their head, onto paper and then away they go. But turning your brilliant idea for your small business into a tangible product can be very exhilarating. As I said, you could hear the excitement in my voice. But as small business owners, we need to understand the importance of effective product development and bringing our visions to life. Excuse me, it is June and it is flu season. Here are some valuable tips to help navigate the process and achieve success. Start with market research. You need to conduct thorough market research to identify the needs, the preferences and pain points of your target audience. This will ensure that your product aligns with the market demand and has a competitive advantage. This, of course, does not mean that you just ask five people and think, well, then that's what I'll do because they've all said, oh, we love you, Sam, and this is what you need to do. So a couple of things you can do. If you are a larger small business, even if you're a small business, it's worth checking out Google Trends to see if it's what the wider community is looking for at the moment. Survey your current clients and ask the question, what are you looking for? Or what is your biggest pain point right now? Or reviewed feedback, that's your best friend. Additional knowledge, and I know it's wordy, uh, sorry, wordy, (laughs) I know it's nerdy, but large industries are actually moving towards auto GPT. It's an auto promoting AI. The AI can process large data sets, identify trends and correlations and generate insightful reports into a natural, easy to read language. Think of this as being Google Analytics, but on way too much coffee. How cool would that be? But... Anyway, let's get back to it. So how can we do this? Engage through email, reach out to your existing customer base or email subscribers and ask them for their valuable insights. It might be as easy as a poll. Seek feedback, leverage your relationships with fellow small business owners and entrepreneurs. Read the room, see what's happening out there. Is there a gap? Social media listening, pay attention to those conversations happening on social media platforms and conduct interviews. Arrange one-on-one interviews with small business owners in your target market if it's a B2B product or service and likewise if it's business to customer. So that's about picking up the phone. You know that thing, pick it up, reach out to your customers, have a chat to them and just see what their pain points are at the moment. If you talk to five or six people, you might actually see a little bit of a current happening as far as, you know, are they aligning with the same pain points? Analyze your competitors. See what they're doing. See what their products are, their pricing and their marketing strategies. Does something seem to be going off really well or is something not really working at at all? And as always, if there's a gap or a niche, jump on it like a seagull on a hot chip because it might be something that the industry hasn't identified yet. B, define your unique selling proposition. Clearly define what sets your product apart from the competition. Highlight its unique features, benefits, and the value it brings to customers. This will be key in positioning your product effectively, sometimes called a point of difference. But remember, a point of difference is just not customer service. I've had so many businesses say, oh, but you know, our point of difference is customer service. Everybody should be giving good customer service. It's the norm and it's paramount in small business. But you need to identify your unique features. You need to be able to identify those because you need to be able to communicate them by understanding your target audience. So that's about conducting that competitive analysis to see what is out there and then craft that compelling position statement. The other thing you need to do is to think about C, and C is create a solid product roadmap. Now, I'm talking about a 400-page plan. It could be just on the back of a A4 sheet of paper on a napkin. It could be on a whiteboard, (coughs) excuse me, or a Word document on your PC. You need to have a bit of a roadmap that outlines the various stages of your product development from concept to launch. Break it down into little achievable milestones, allowing you to track progress and stay organized. 
as I said, even if it's on the one-page scribble pad, you need to define the vision, identify the key milestones, set your priorities, define tasks, who's going to do what and when, and have a deadline. You need to be able to track progress, adapt and iterate. And that means going back and reviewing. Speaking of iterate and refine, embrace the feedback loop and constant continuously I read on your product. Seek input from customers, conduct user testing, make necessary adjustments to improve its functionality, usability and overall user experience. Had a business come to me once and talk about they launched this new product. Anyway, fantastic product. But when I actually rang a couple of their customers who hadn't put in repeat orders, they said, Sam, the packaging is just ugh. So make sure that you talk to your people that might be helping you with your trial. Now, mentioning trials, some clients of mine have been very, very innovative and have picked, say, their five to top 10 clients, their target market, of course, and have asked them to be part of a private trial. So in return, they received a 12-month in-store online discount or a discount on the product once launched. They got the choice. The trial involved samples and a 10-minute quiz and it was really tiny, very intimate, and just good quality feedback through the quiz. So that was absolute gold as far as the feedback goes. Their questions involved everything from the look and the feel of the branding and the packaging to the overall effectiveness of the product. This way it brought loyal customers closer to the small business and its brand. Absolutely loved that idea. All right, <clears throat> around this new product, you need to build a strong team. You need to surround yourself with talented and dedicated people that share your vision. You need to collaborate with experts in design, development, marketing and other relevant fields to ensure a well-rounded approach to product development. Now, I'm going to hear you say, oh, but we don't have a huge amount of budget. Totally get it. And there'll be some of those things that you'll have to do yourself. But don't be scared to reach out and get somebody else's opinion who's got a background in the particular area you're trying to achieve. There are many quotes about surrounding yourself with people whose skills surpass your own, and it is correct. You need inspirational people, and doing so will absolutely explode your brand once you get it right so you do need to choose correctly and it does take a village small businesses can look for peers and in other industries business coaches mentors and advisors for me it was older people not as in age but as in longevity of holding or running a business and they were absolutely invaluable in their feedback and before I engage in a specialist, just in case you're asking, I always research the field. I make sure I learn some of the terminology, term can't even say it, some of the terminology, so that I can understand the journey that they needed me to go on. If they could not break it down into layman's terms, I found another specialist who could. I also read articles and books so that I could upskill enough to understand and be able to have conversations with them. Now, the next big thing is test, test, test. You need to prioritise product testing at various stages of development, identify potential issues, gather user feedback and make data-driven decisions to refine your product further. Quality assurance is key to delivering top-notch product. Nothing worse than making a jam jar and then you find out that the lids rust or the lids get damaged easily. So make sure that you're trying, doing your trials, doing your testing. And plan for scalability. Goodness gracious, what happens if this thing takes off? You need to consider the long-term scalability of your product. Can you go from making 300 units a month to 3,000? Anticipate future growth and plan for manufacturing distribution and any potential challenges, because they'll come at you, that might arise as demand increases. Remember the journey from idea to execution requires persistent adaptability and a passion for delivering exceptional products. You need to stay focused. I know it's hard, but you're going to have to stay focused. You need to embrace those challenges as learning opportunities and don't get, I suppose, perturbed or put off. And you never, never, ever lose a side of the value of your product that it's going to bring to your customers, especially if you've had all that grounding done talking to your clients before you started on the journey. So if you got this far, and I hope you have, you're probably starting to think about some items 
that you could develop. Start writing them down. And as I said, it can be as simple as a one page, well, two page plan with outlines to keep you on track. I know somebody who can help you with that, by the way. <laughs> anyway, for more information, follow along on social media. I've got two private Facebook groups now. Sign up for the five minute business boost newsletter or check out my website. Until next time, remember anything is possible, especially in the northeast of Victoria. Bye for now.